Hey everybody, Ken McAuliffe, Jazz Vinyl Lover here. Late night, New York City, January the 2nd. Listen to a little bit of Youssef Latif, Savoy. This is a hard record to find. I've only seen it a couple times. When you find this record, it's often trapped because this old school stuff people really dig. It's a little avant-garde as you can hear there. But this is an original Savoy pressing. Maybe late 50s, early 60s, I'm not sure of which. This is a rare pressing. This record has not been reissued, probably has been reissued on CD, but not in vinyl. But I wanted to talk a little bit about pressings. Some people think a channel like mine are the people who are interested in Music Matters pressings versus Analog Productions pressings versus Blue Note 75th Anniversary pressings or Tone Poet pressings or um, 80th series pressings or Verb Vinyl vital vinyl pressings that, that were missing the boat. It's not about the pressings, it's about the music. The fact is, even at our store, at the Jazz Record Center, unless you are willing to pay close to a thousand dollars, generally speaking, there are no original pressings. They're extremely hard to find. The Impulse catalog was not reissued very often. It has been reissued now. The Verve catalog, only recently with the Verve vinyl series, did they begin to reissue that catalog. All these titles are available on CD, if you want a CD. But I think people like vinyl for the warmth, quote unquote. There's a more organic sound with vinyl. If you get into the, te the technology of it, the digital is a sample. It's literally sampling the analog waveform. If you look at a waveform being produced by a record, it's a perfect square waveform. It is the original waveform. A digital sample is a sample of that waveform and is often curved. It is never an exact, exact sample. That's a whole nother story. The point is that if you want to really hear the music, I believe you have to hear vinyl. And furthermore, to the idea of pressings, I'm in New York City, I can find this pressing. But if you're a jazz fan across most of America, not in the urban center or across the world and you want to hear American jazz, what you have available to, to you are reissues. Blue Note came back with a 75th anniversary series, four titles for two years straight every month. It did incredibly well, 1899. That told them they could go farther. They did the Tone Poet series. Well, initially they farmed it out to Music Matters who charged exorbitant pressings, prices, prices for their pretty pressings and beautiful artwork. Now they're back with the Tone Poet, with the 80th series, and now all the majors are back into it. So you will soon be able, I'd say within five years, you're gonna be able to get everything that was ever pressed. At some point, someone will start reissuing the Savoy records, the Dawn records, the Bethlehem records. The, they'll do the DECA catalog, which has totally been ignored. All these amazing catalogs have been ignored because the majors didn't see any point in doing it. But at the end of the day, the only way you can get these records these days is through reissues. And when you get into reissues, you have domestic reissues, you have reissues cut from CDs coming from the UK or the EU. So in our store, people wanna know, which should I get? Which is the best? Well, then I have to ask them, uh, do you have a hi-fi system? What do, you, what do you care about? If they're not concerned about the sound, I send them an EU, I sell them an EU digitally sourced pressing. The artwork is beautiful. They're not gonna hear the difference. They just wanna hear that music. Other people are a little more concerned. They wanna hear something closer to the original sound. In that case, I say, get a tone poet, get an analog production, get a pure pleasure, which used to be good. So at the end of the day, the whole fanaticism and obsession, obsession and fetishistic approach Fetishism, is that the word, about pressings, is not about pressings. You know, there are people who want a first pressing then, but those are, that's a very small amount of the public. Most people who are getting into jazz, there is a resurgence in jazz because of vinyl and headphones and the whole hip hop atmosphere, which has brought turntables back and headphones. People are back into vinyl, they're back into jazz but they want to know which pressing to get because there are so many pressings available. Miles Davis, the five records on Prestige, the four rather, before I went to Columbia. You can now get, uh, they just reissued all of those records in one set from Prestige, cut from uh, files. All those records are still available for analog productions. 
for $35 a pop to sound much closer to the original. Or you can find OJC's. OJC's, the original reissue, original jazz classics, used to be common. Now they're in, now you never see them. Those were a cheap way to get into music, into jazz. They were five, four, seven ninety-eight. We never have those in the store anymore. So you were left with a certain amount of reissues to buy to get you to the music. It's not just about, you know, if you have all the records in the world, if you own a record store, like Fred Cohen, he has the most expensive, valuable records in the world. So when you ask him why are Blue Note so popular, it's a trend. He can say that. He knows it's not a trend. Blue Note has a cachet. They have the artist. They have the story. They have the artwork. They have an amazing roster of musicians that really got their due in the last 30 years. But at the end of the day, if you're getting into jazz and you want to get vinyl, all you have available to you is a reissue. So the question is, which, which reissue do I get? And for the people who do care about sound, and it's not a sin to care about sound, it's not a sin to have a nice system so you can really hear the music and become one with the music. I tell you, when I, I have a very expensive stereo. I've been listening to high-end audio since 1995. I spent a lot of money on it. Now I write for Stereophile, and I get to play with these toys. This gets me closer to the music. It's not about, ooh, look at my pressing. You know, the, the Verve did the Verve Vital Vinyl series. Those are cut from tape. They're about 24 bucks a pop. Those things sound fantastic. They sound wonderful. And at the end of the day, it's about the sound. What gets you closest to the musicians, to the instruments, to what they were trying to convey in the studio. It's about the music, you know? And there's a whole lot of stuff behind the music, leading to the music, the struggle, the social scene. I personally believe that when Hank Mobley went to the studio to cut his masterpieces, he wasn't thinking about, and I think the great majority of them were, I could be speaking out of turn, but I don't think these guys were thinking about all the misery they came up with. Making jazz is about joy, about exaltation. I think they were trying to escape the misery they grew up with. You have songs like Alabama from Coltrane, that's a little bit different. You have a few artists who had the capacity the genius to address that but the great majority of them were trying to survive and make records and live as musicians i was a road musician for four years i was a jazz drummer for 10 years i played in dance bands on the road playing disco music for three years um you know musicians just want to survive they were in new york in the 50s uh trying to survive playing their music what brought them joy and to me, when I listen to Blue Nut, that's what I hear is joy. That's what I hear from, you hear something a little different in Impulse. The records on Impulse came out of a different impulse as you were. They were born out of the struggle. They were born out of a spiritual um, vacuum that needed to be filled. And you can hear that in that music. But to me, the closer you can get to the original recording, that's what the artist wanted to hear. That's what he wanted you to hear. And so, a clean record, a clean stylus, a decent system is only going to get you closer to the music. You know, if you're fine with a uh, with a console from 1950 and that gets you grooving, that's perfect. But some people want more than that, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's I get so sick and tired of people saying audiophiles are audio fools. Audiophiles care about they do care about gear. There is a definite audiophile nervosa that happens. But at the end of the day. Every pressing is about getting you closer to the music that the musicians put on the record. If they didn't want you to get closer to the music, they wouldn't have performed it. They wouldn't have recorded it. They want you to hear what's on those records. And trust me, if you hear an early Blue Note, an early Impulse, an early Verve, you're really hearing it. You're hearing the sound they put on those records in all its beauty and glory. You want to keep that record clean. You want to have a clean stylus. You want to have a decent stereo so you can hear the music. You know, if you're just at a bar on a Saturday night and it's loud as hell and it's noisy, you know, play it on a DJ turntable, play it through some PA speakers. Nobody cares. But when you're home and you spent money, what did I spend on this record? 10 bucks. This was quite a deal for the Savoy record. When it's just me and my system, I want to hear what's on this record. I want to hear what everybody played. I want to hear it as cleanly, as clearly, as with much warmth and tone and extension as possible. So at the end of the day, it's about the music, but it's also about the pressing that contains the music. Thanks a lot.